This video is a step-by-step -step introduction to understanding, interpreting, and taking action on your Google Analytics data. Let's get started. When you click into your reports, you'll see your overall site usage numbers. Here's what they mean. Visits is the number of times someone interacted with your website. Bounce rate is the percentage of those visits in which the person instantly left your site. Page views is how many pages were viewed during those visits. And here is the average number of pages viewed during each visit. Average time on site tells you how long people stayed on your site. Percent new visits shows how many visits were from people who visited your site for the first time. This data is from a blog. On blogs, people usually just read the latest post and then leave. So for blogs, bounce rate and time on site aren't good measures of quality. Let's look at these same metrics for another site. 345,000 visits is a lot of visits to have in a month. To get some context, it would probably be best to trend that data over time and see if it's going up or down. We'll do that in a minute. Next, the combination of almost 12 pages per visit and over 6 minutes average time on site is impressive. Many websites get only 3 to 5 pages per visit. These visitors are really exploring the site. The bounce rate at 35% is very good in context of the number of visits and page views. This website is getting a lot of qualified visitors. Now let's use the overtime graph to look at the trends. Here's how you can quickly compare this month with last month. Now that we've set a comparison date range, we can get some context for our traffic numbers. Going back to our blog metrics, we can see visits and page views are up 36%. That's quite an increase. Pages viewed per visit and bounce rate have also improved, but only slightly. And we have a slightly higher percentage of new visitors. The only metric that's gone down is average time on site, but it's only decreased 5 seconds. So, with just these basic metrics, we have an idea of what's happening on the site. Take a look at the Traffic Sources Overview to see how people arrived at your site. Direct traffic includes the people who typed in your website URL or who clicked on a bookmark. Some people call this default traffic or ambient traffic. Referring sites are other websites sending traffic to you. These could be banner ads on other sites, or any kind of link. These could be blogs or affiliates who link to you. Search engines, that's Google, Yahoo, MSN, Ask, and others. This bucket will include both your organic search traffic, that's from search results you didn't pay for, as well as pay-per-click or cost-per-click traffic that you did pay for. Other can be from emails and special links that you've set up and tagged with campaign variables. If you want to track newsletters and specific banner ads, you might take a look at the Google Analytics Help Center and learn how to tag these links so that you can get detailed information about the traffic they send you. Let's look at each kind of traffic. I can get to the reports by using the left navigation or by clicking the link here in the Traffic Sources Overview. Here's the report for your direct traffic. You'll notice that the same familiar metrics we've been talking about appear in each of these reports. Now let's look at referring sites. This report is great for identifying sources you don't know about, but who are sending you traffic. You might visit the referring pages and see why. You might want to establish a marketing relationship with the best referring sites. Now, let's look at search engines. It's really important to look at the search traffic and keywords and understand which search engine is working for you and why. Use the tables to get more detail on your traffic from specific search engines and keywords. Again, throughout these reports, you'll see the same familiar metrics. Let's go to the Keywords report in the Traffic Sources section and see which keywords send qualified, low bounce rate traffic. Scroll down and look at the keywords in the table. Each keyword tells you what the visitor expects to find on your site. 
Keywords with high bounce rates show where you fail to meet that expectation. It's a good idea to separate your paid and organic traffic so that you can identify paid keywords with high bounce rates. Now let's look at what pages these visitors land on. The top landing pages report shows you how many people are entering on each page of your website. The bounce rate column gives you an indicator of how engaging each of these pages is. Since this is a blog, these bounce rates are very high. Yours are hopefully much lower. Any of the top 10 landing pages that has a high bounce rate needs to be fixed. By fixing these pages, you increase the likelihood that people will go deeper into your site and buy something or convert to one of your goals. So now might be a good time to make a note of your problem paid keywords so you can temporarily stop spending money on them until you figure out whether you're buying the wrong keywords or whether you're just driving this traffic to the wrong landing pages. Also, make a note of your problem unpaid keywords so that you can evaluate whether you need to optimize your site for different keywords. And finally, identify landing pages that need to be made more relevant or that need stronger calls to action. If you have an e-commerce site, use the e-commerce reporting section and the e-commerce tab that appears on many of the reports to track the success of your site and marketing initiatives. The e-commerce overview gives you a quick snapshot of your e-commerce website, from conversion rate to the average order value to the number of products you've sold. And you can segment this data to identify the best campaigns, keywords, and geographic locations. The average order value report can help you understand a key performance trend. The transaction detail report gives you a summary of your e-commerce performance and also shows the individual transactions on your website. Visits to purchase shows how long it takes for people to purchase on your website. You'll need to add some e-commerce tracking code to your site and you can learn how to do this in the Google Analytics Help Center. Just search for e-commerce and click on the How Do I Track E-Commerce Transactions article. For non-e-commerce sites, the best way to stay focused on outcomes is to define conversion goals. A goal is a website page which a visitor reaches once they have made a purchase or completed another desired action. You can even specify values for goals and have those values used to calculate per visit goal value in ROI. So for example, if you know that one out of every 100 views of a product page results in a $500 sale, you can set a value of $5 for your product page goal. To define your goals, just go to the Analytics Settings page. If you don't see this edit link next to the profile for which you want to configure goals, it means that you don't have administrator privileges and you'll need to work with an administrator in order to configure goals. Assuming you are an administrator, you can click Edit next to the profile for which you're going to establish goals, then click Edit next to one of the four goals, fill in the URL of the goal page, and then you can provide a name for the goal which will appear in your reports and then optionally provide a value. So here we'll put in five dollars. Then click Save Changes and that's it. So congratulations. You've just learned the basics of putting your analytics data to work and you're ready to improve your own site. Thanks for watching.